So I thought I would sit down and talk to you about this bike and the significance this bike has to the owner and give you some really good advice because I think I gave the owner of this bike some excellent advice and I'm really glad they took it. I know it's advice that I think would be helpful to many people out there. If you are A, um, already into road cycling, but perhaps your bike is rather cheap or old, and you're thinking about upgrading to a new bike, uh, one of the new fancy aero disc brake carbon bikes out there, um, and you're looking at all the prices and the different brands, and you're, you're wondering what you should buy. And the same goes for the second kind of person. Perhaps this is going to be your first road bike. You've never ridden road bike before. You might not even have ridden a other bicycle before. This might be your very first introduction into the world of cycling. And again, you're interested to know what bike you should buy and you, you want to know what to spend your money on. And this is my advice to you. Okay. So this story begins a bit over a month ago with a friend of mine. He's in the Singaporean army but he's based here in Brunei. Now this friend of mine poisoned two of his other friends. So in the Malay culture, um, there is a word, I believe it's rachun, but I will, I will check it out. I might be wrong. If it's wrong, I'll just cut that bit out of the video <laughs> and put the real word. But basically uh, in the Malay culture, friends poison other friends and what they mean by this is not literal poison they don't like put cyanide in their friends drink what they do is if one guy has a particular hobby say for example like cycling they will take their friends to a bicycle shop or they will show their friends their bicycle equipment they will show them how cool it is how interesting it is all the different kinds of stuff you can buy and they will influence and poison their friends into becoming addicted to the hobby of cycling. And that is what my Singaporean friend did to two of his fellow army colleagues. He introduced them to the world of cycling and got them hooked, or at least got them interested enough to the point where they wanted to buy bicycles. Now he told them about me and my bike shop and he trusts me and he trusts my store and he trusts my advice, which I'm, I'm very honored that he does. And he sent one of his friends over to me to have a look at bikes because his friend was interested in buying a Cinelli bike. And his friend uh, had looked in a Cinelli magazine that I'd actually given to my, my friend, our mutual friend. Anyway, this guy who's a first time road cyclist, never done road cycling before. He'd ridden a folding bike a few times, you know, like during family events and things, but he'd never ridden properly on the road, you know, in a proper cycling group or cycling team or any long distance, for example. But he wanted to, he wants to do long distance, um, you know, like 100 kilometer rides and things. And he came to the store looking for a bike. And he was, I'd like say, he was interested in the Cinelli bikes we had here, and we had one in his size. And after I listened to him talk about what he wanted, I basically turned around and said to him, look, I could sell you this brand new Cinelli bike today, but I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. I said, it's got nothing to do with the bike. The bike that you're looking at is a really good bike. You can do anything you want on this bike. You could ride up mountains on this bike. You could race this bike. You could ride long distance on this bike. This is Cinelli Superstar. I said, this bike is a fantastic bike but it's a lot of money. It's like $5,000 for a brand new bike. This it's actually less than that. It's about 4,000 something, 4,000, let's say 4,400 for this bike. Okay. There's like four, four grand for this bike. I said to this guy, I said, look, I can sell you this brand new bike, but there's, there's potentially problems. And I can think of three problems. I said, number one, you don't know if you like road cycling. I've seen plenty of people, especially women, buy very expensive bicycles and then end up never using them because they go for one ride and they get scared by a car or they 
don't decide they don't like the heat or they don't like the pain or they don't like the trouble or they get bored and you know we're talking sometimes and I'm, I'm being dead honest with this sometimes seven eight nine ten thousand dollar bicycles just get left they just get pushed in the corner of a room and then occasionally these bikes come in for servicing after years and they're in a complete state like i have i have seen bikes utterly destroyed from neglect left outside in the rain or just left in a damp cellar somewhere um never ridden and they're just they're just ruined like they absolutely ruined the things beyond the point where you'd have to spend more to fix it than you did originally to buy the bike. So I said, that's one issue. You don't know if you like road cycling yet. So if you spend four or $5,000 on a bike, that's a lot of money, you know? Um, it's a lot of money to throw away. And because it's a brand new bike, the moment you ride it for the first time, you're gonna lose a lot of your investment. You know, if you look at the second hand market, the bike that you're buying today is going to be worth 40% less the moment you walk out of the shop. So, you know, is it a good investment to buy a brand new bike again when you're a beginner? And I said, then the next thing is this, you don't know what it is that you want. I mean, you've looked in magazines and you've seen bikes that look attractive, you know, and it's very easy to fall in love with a bicycle just because of the way it looks. And you don't know that perhaps later on down the road, you don't think to yourself, oh man, I wish I bought a bike with wider tire clearance so I could do gravel. Or, oh man, this bike is just not stiff enough. You know, I, I want to do racing. I want to do crit. I want to sprint with my friends and this bike is comfortable, but it, it's just not stiff enough. Or, you know, when I bought this bike, I really loved the, the style, but now, I realize actually I don't like it as much as I thought I did. I wish I bought something different. And because you bought a brand new bike, you've already spent all that money. And you, you don't know what experience you're going to have on that bike. You don't know whether you're going to like it. You don't know whether it's going to be best suited for you and the kind of riding that you will end up doing. You might think that you're going to be a full-on road rider, but in a year or two's time, you, maybe you'll be a gravel rider maybe you'll be you know a long distance touring rider you don't know and i said the final point is this if you buy a new bike as a complete beginner and you go out on clip pedals like these and you get to a set of traffic lights and you forget to unclip you're going to fall down minimum you're going to damage your bar tape minimum Potentially, you're going to damage your jersey and your cycling shorts, which are not expensive nowadays, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of clothing. And at worst, you're going to damage your carbon fiber frame because that was the kind of bikes he was looking at, carbon fiber. I said, I cannot recommend a brand new carbon fiber bike to someone who's never ridden because the potential of you damaging or destroying the frame in a, in a silly accident is just really high. And again, it's not financially viable or worth it to invest that money in a high-end carbon frame. Mosquito. Too many mosquitoes in Brunei. In a high-end carbon frame that potentially you might break within a few months of riding. People make mistakes, especially new riders. It could be something as simple as over tightening a bolt by accident when you're adjusting your saddle height and you end up ruining a perfectly good frame. So I said, look, this doesn't make me any money, really. Um, I, if I was an unscrupulous person or if I was a decent salesman, I would be advising you right now to buy the Chinelli bike that we have in store. But I just so happen to be a very bad salesman and a very honest person. So what I said is, go out and look for a second-hand bike. And when you find that bike, send me a picture 
or get the, the guy who's selling it to allow you to bring it here. I'll check it for you, see if it's good, and then I can recommend you can buy that bike or not. I can tell you what it's going to cost to repair it in case any repairs are needed. And I said, that is a much, much better choice because you're investing far less in a secondhand bike. You can potentially get something very good. And all those disadvantages that I've mentioned are not going to be there with a secondhand bike. Now, he did find a bike. He found this one. Now, originally, this bike came with um, a set of aluminium wheels, which I have not seen but came with aluminium wheels in pretty good condition. It came with the, the tires. It came with a 105 group set with a rotor flow crank. And the rotor flow crank is a very lightweight BB30 crank that fits nicely into the BB30 bottom bracket down here. Um, a lightweight KMC chain and some very basic black bar tape and stuff. And when they brought it to the store, they wanted it checking over and they wanted the, um, the steerer tube cutting down. And as we were working on the bike, you know, getting it ready to ride, we noticed that the bottom bracket or the crank was damaged and broken and needed a part of the crank needed to be replaced in order to ride the bike, unfortunately. Um, and I gave them two options. I said, look, uh, we can try and search online and try and get that piece of the crank and buy it and ship it into Brunei if we can and fix it and then you're good to go. Or we can replace the, the group set because I don't have a crank to offer you. I said, you can look online, maybe you can find like a secondhand crank somewhere. They looked, they couldn't find anything. There was nothing available in Brunei right now. So the guy said, look, let's just upgrade the group set. So we actually upgraded the group set to Altegra. The guy also searched online on Facebook, I think it was, and he found himself these carbon fiber wheels. And so he bought those as well. Now for the original bike with the 105 group set and the rotor crank, the very expensive lightweight rotor crank and uh, the aluminum wheels and the componentry that you see bar the new bar tape, he supposedly paid a thousand dollars, $1,000 for a complete bike, which for this bike in this condition is an absolute bargain. I mean, this frame is like spotless. I've been over the entire frame. I've checked it inside and out. And this bike, it looks like it was never ridden. It was ridden, but the frame is in such good condition. It's almost like new. Okay. There is plenty of life left in this bike. The wheels, the extra carbon wheels, he got those for 500 bucks and they're pro light wheels, 50 millimeters deep. They've got decent, sturdy spokes on them with exposed nipples. So they're easy to true. The hubs feel fine. The bearings feel fine. These are really nice wheels for 500 bucks. These are properly decent. And the braking surface again is like new. So there's tons and tons of miles and life on these wheels. So he invested 1,500 in the bike and the wheels, and then I sold him this Ortega group set to upgrade his 105 5, 800 group set with the broken crank for an extra thousand bucks, about $1,050 for the Ortega group set. So in total, he spent $2,500 building up this bike. Now, to put that in context, when this bike came in with the 105 group set on it and we weighed it, it weighed 8.4 plus kilograms. I don't even know exact weight because they weighed it amongst themselves and they told me the weight and they said about 8.4, a little bit more. 8.4 kg. After we finished sticking the Ortega group set on it, bearing in mind that the Ortega crank is heavier than the rotor crank that we took off, and the Ortega chain is heavier than the KMC lightweight chain that we took off, all, all those components, by the way, are in a bag. They're going back to the customer, and they're there either as replacement parts. He's also got an additional cassette because of the wheels, 11-speed cassette. The parts in that bag are probably worth another 500 bucks 
because they're in such good condition. The chain was like new. I tested the chain with a chain checker and it was like new. So he's got like a brand new, another 11 speed chain, a brand new cassette in there, nearly a full 105 group set bar the crank. All he has to do is buy that piece offline of the rotor crank and he's got a crank for it. So it's either a group set for a new bike or it's a group set that he can sell and potentially make money back on this second hand bike. But let's say the investment was 2,500. The original weight before we upgraded it was 8.4 plus kilograms. Now it's 8.23, so 8,230 grams. Right, to put this in context, the other customer who came in the store a couple of months ago to put a load of carbon componentry on his new bike, and he's a new rider as well, he bought a Trek Imonda, okay, the new Trek Imonda disc with a 105 disc brake mechanical group set 11 speed, okay, so the R7000 something disc brake group set. 11 speed full carbon frame stock 30 millimeter aluminium wheels i think they are or maybe maybe less than 30 millimeters but stock aluminium disc brake wheels that come with the bike um what else uh, and he upgraded all the the saddle the seat post the bar the stem all to carbon fiber bond traeger components so he probably spent another thousand dollars on extra componentry oh and a carbon fiber physique saddle as well and he spent roughly around four thousand six hundred dollars on that imonda and after he upgraded excuse me after he upgraded all the parts on the bike like the handlebar the stem the seat post and the saddle to carbon fiber he probably spent close to five six thousand dollars because it would have been another thousand dollars worth of components he put on the bike. So four thousand six hundred ish dollars plus an additional thousand or so dollars. So you know you're looking at a six thousand dollar bike almost. That bike that he bought with the 105 disc brake 11 speed group set, carbon frame and full carbon componentry stock aluminium disc brake wheels weighs in at 9.3 kilograms 9.3 kilograms which is in my opinion a ridiculously heavy weight for a five or six thousand dollar bicycle a ridiculously heavy weight for a five or six thousand dollar bicycle and we're talking about the amonda as well not the madone the amonda is not the aero bike the amonda is supposedly the lightweight climbing bike full carbon frame and their lightweight treks lightweight climbing bike with disc brakes in 105 full carbon everything including the saddle 9.3 kg 9,300 grams. Best part is $6,000. So this bike here, it's got two group sets, potentially. It's got two sets of wheels. It cost $2,500. <laughs> and it weighs 8.2. 8.23. 8.2 so my advice is this after I've told this very convoluted story why the heck and that's pretty strong language but why the heck would you buy a new modern carbon disc brake bike if that's what you're considering doing because what you have here is a bike with plenty of aerodynamic potential. Very lightweight for its price. Stiff, sturdy, new almost carbon fiber frame. 
capable of being ridden in a race or capable of being ridden up a mountain. Brand new Ultega group set for two and a half thousand dollars. And if you spend your six thousand dollars, you get one set of aluminium wheels, one 105 group set, and a bike that's getting close to 10 kg. Close enough to 10 kilograms. That to me is just ridiculous. And that is what we're seeing now in the world of, of modern carbon bike. So I think I've illustrated my point pretty well. If you are new to cycling, it is a really bad idea to buy a modern carbon road bike. They are incredibly heavy. They are very hard to work on and learn because they are more complex than these bikes with the exposed cables and the mechanical shifting and the rim brakes. They are extremely heavy and they are ridiculously expensive. And they are also extremely prone to breaking. And when they do break, it's impossible to replace the parts because if you break the seat post for whatever reason on a Trek Amanda or a Trek Madone, with the Trek Amanda, the seat post is part of the frame. So if you break the seat post, you have to throw the frame away because you broke the frame. With the Madone, if you break part of the seat post, you can only buy a replacement post from Trek. This bike, as you can see, it has a standard 27 point something, 27.2 is it, millimeter seat post. So you can replace this with any seat post on the market that will fit. It doesn't matter. You can upgrade it to a carbon one if you like. You can break it. You can replace it with a different style of seat post. It, it's a standard traditional size of seat post. The same goes for the cockpit. If you break or damage anything at the cockpit, it's all totally standard stuff. It's replaceable. Modern road bikes with their aero integrated cockpits, it's not the same. With this bike, if you have a cable issue, within five minutes, you can change the cable and you can fix the bike. With the modern bikes, with the Amanda, I spent, for the customer that came in and wanted the new carbon aero bar fitted to his bike, it took me three hours to take apart the bike, fit the new bar, redo uh, the brakes, make sure I didn't need to bleed anything and get all the disc brakes working again, get all the cables down back inside the frame. It was a bloody nightmare. It actually took me all day because there was all the other stuff they wanted doing to the bike. But to fit a bar and a stem on this bike takes 30 minutes to an hour, maybe. Pretty fast. Yeah, with the other bike, it took me nearly all day, like four or five hours to get everything done. So there you go. That is my story about this bike. And that is my advice. If you are a new rider, if you're planning to get into road cycling, avoid at all costs buying a new bicycle. Because a new bike, like I said before, is going to lose value faster. You don't even know if you like road cycling yet. You don't know if you're going to like the bike. You don't know if the bike is suitable for what you want to do with it. And you're going to make plenty of mistakes along the way. And those mistakes, if you bought a brand new bike for four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000, are going to be very expensive mistakes. And it breaks my heart when I see customers bring in bikes that are a few years old and have never been ridden and cost them tens of thousands of dollars. Because that is the kind of money some people are spending nowadays on bikes that they end up never riding. So be smart, be clever, follow good advice, be like this guy and get yourself an amazing bike that is both lightweight and nice to ride 
and looks great for a ridiculously low price. For two and a half thousand Brunei dollars, I will post the exchange rate below. You can end up with this glorious machine with its 50 millimeter carbon wheels and its brand new Ortega group set. And this guy probably didn't even need to spend this much. I mean, we're in Brunei, we have very limited secondhand bikes on our market because we're such a small country. And there's probably only about a thousand hardcore road cyclists in the entire country. So the amount of secondhand goods out there is re really, really limited. But he still managed to find this bargain. If you were in another country with a bigger population, like America or somewhere in Europe, you will find bikes like this at probably even half this price. So there you go. So I'm happy. I'm really happy. Not because he bought this from me. I obviously, I appreciate that and I like to help people out, but I'm really happy he followed my advice and he ended up with this machine because this machine, I guarantee, will take him as far as he wants to go. And by the end of the year or, you know, the end of next year, maybe, he will fully understand this bike. He will fully know what he likes and what he loves about the bike and what he doesn't. And he will be fully prepared, fully ready, and with full knowledge of what the next bike is going to be. And that then is the time when you start looking at new bikes. You start looking at those bikes and you go, I know exactly what I want. It took me 20 years to get to the stage, nearly 20 years to get to the stage where I was riding the perfect bike for me, which is a titanium bike. It's a titanium lightweight road bike. Um, and I love it and I can't wait to rebuild that bike. It took me 20 years to get there because I've ridden tons of aluminium bikes. I've ridden a few steel bikes. I've ridden a, a couple of carbon bikes and I'll never go back to carbon personally because I just don't see the point. I certainly don't see the point in buying a new carbon bike. That's kind of ridiculous. Whereas secondhand, you can get great stuff like this. When he walked in with this bike and he told me how much he got it for, I was like, dude, can you buy me a bike? Because I was like so impressed with what he managed to get. Anyway, that is my story, folks. So follow my advice. Don't go blowing your money on a brand new bike. So I think I've spoken enough. Hopefully you got the message. And with that, I want to say good night. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a comment below to what you think. Uh, I appreciate all the comments. I do try and read all the comments and I try to reply to them all as well. I really enjoy uh, learning from your comments. Hit the like bu button if this was useful to you or you enjoyed it. Share it with a friend who's thinking about buying a new bike. And good luck in hunting for a new bike. Not a new bike, but a second-hand bike if that's what you want to do. Um, there are some fantastic bargains out there even in a tiny country like Brunei. And if you live in a big country with millions of people living there, Brunei has a population of less than half a million. Um, if you live in a big country with millions and millions of people living there, you will find some amazing bikes for sale for next to nothing. So good luck on that. And um, yeah, as always, folks, stay safe when you're riding. Bye.